First of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to our volunteer headquarters. If you haven't been here before, please help yourself to any refreshments or anything you need. This is a home away from home for the volunteers who are working here from early in the morning to late at night. And in fact, we don't even let them stop working during political events. <laughs> 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 Still stuffing envelopes. Uh, we're very, very privileged to have some very special guests here today, in addition to our guest of honor, Adam Andrzejewski. But I'd like to also acknowledge Dan Patlack, who's here with us who uh, you probably met. And Dan's running for Cook County Board of Tax Review. People ask me all the time what the federal government can do about property taxes. And there are some things we can do, but the most important thing to do, I tell them, is break up the cartel that runs the Cook County tax system. And that's what Dan yeah. does. And uh, we've also, so we've got the local level represented, we've got Adam here who uh, is representing real knowledge, insight, passion, and principle in state government. And his group, For the Good of Illinois, is really leading the way with ideas on how to reform Illinois politics, how to create clean government and effective government. And he's done so much for the state, continues to do so much for communities all over Illinois and for candidates. And I'm very privileged that I'm the first federal candidate that Adam is endorsing. It's a real thrill, and I think it really says something about how far our district has come, how far our campaign has come, and how many people we're bringing together behind our cause. Yesterday, Carol Marine said downtown that she thought our election was going to be one of the likely upsets of the 2010 election. <laughs> I'm thrilled at the attendance here today. I also know how many of you came in from walking neighborhoods, and I know how effective that has been. That's why we've seen Jan Tchaikovsky's poll numbers fall below 50%. That's why we're seeing the media suddenly take an interest. That's why our fundraising numbers have been so spectacular. We outraised Jan Tchaikovsky, not just by a little bit, by a two-to-one margin, which wow. is historic. It's, there's never been a safe Democratic, quote-unquote, seat before that a Republican has done that in for at least the last 15 years and maybe longer. We still haven't found it yet. This is not just a tidal wave across the country that we're riding, but we're also creating a tidal wave here in Chicago. And you're going to see every day as this election renews itself each morning how people begin to realize this is one of the most important races in Illinois in terms of determining the future of government and politics, not just here in Chicago and the state of Illinois, but across the nation. When we win here, we're going to send a shockwave throughout the country and remind people that you can't keep sending the biggest spender back to Congress. You can't keep spending the worst on economic growth. You can't keep sending the worst on national security back to Congress and expect there to be no consequences. So with that, I'd like to introduce Adam, who was really one of the shining lights in our gubernatorial primary, and I do hope he remains a leader because we need him in Illinois, and I'm so privileged that I have his endorsement today. He's going to address us, and afterwards we'll have questions about anything at the state level, federal level, or local level if Dan wants to jump in. So, Adam, thank you very much for being here. Well, I'm privileged to be here today. My name is Adam Andrzejewski, and I endorse Joe Pollack for content. Joe is easy to fight for because Joel fights for us. And I think that's what brings you here today. It's, I know it's what brings, it's why I'm here today. Uh, we gra gather here today with a seriousness of purpose. We gather in Cook County. And in Cook County, over the last 20 years, things haven't gone too well. Cook County has fewer jobs now than it, what it did in 1990. It's the lost two decades of growth here in Cook County. We need to be the people that turn that trend. For the last two years, I've asked one, one question to audiences all over the state of Illinois. And this is the question I'm going to ask it again today. Who here thinks that Illinois is running well? <laughs> <laughs> and the record's intact. Not one person, even on college campus, campuses with the liberal next generation, nobody thinks Illinois is running well. 
Nobody thinks that America is running well, and it's time to fire Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> stimulus bill passed, Illinois has lost 220,000 jobs. Quite simply, the public sector is cannibalizing the private sector, and Illinois is a perfect example of the decimation of job growth by our friends in Washington, D.C. I think a long time ago, a poet said it best. Lady Liberty's lamp lights the golden door. It's about the American dream. It's about freedom and liberty going forward. And when Jan Schakowsky votes to hike your taxes, to spend more money, and to bond you, your children, and your grandchildren into more debt, the American dream is ripped at, and it's torn at, and it's shredded just a little bit further. We need to fire Jan Schakowsky. understands the American dream. He'll fight for the American dream because he's lived the American dream. Harvard undergraduate, Harvard Law School, that's the American dream. And how about it in Illinois politics, where you got Scott Lee Cohen, an entrepreneur that had the problem with the hooker, dropped out of lieutenant governor's race, decided to run for governor. You got Alexi Janulius. He was another entrepreneur, a family-owned business owner. He had a problem with the Mafia and with the tens of millions of dollars of loans that he signed off on, admittedly, to Chicago mob bankers. What is it about Illinois politics? And Joel Pollack stands in stark contrast to Illinois politicians. We need to fight for Joe Pollack. I believe that right now we're at an inflection point. This is a true moment in history. And we know, because of our shared American history, how this turns out. Through a lot of hard work, through elbow grease, through perseverance and dedication to our principles and values, we the people again save America from its slide towards socialism. And we will again in our generation right now. This is our moment. We know we will win. But I believe on this inflection point that this is a time for courage and not compromise. Think about Ronald Reagan versus the Soviet Union. Ronald Reagan understood the inflection point, and he decided to fight with all assets against the Soviet Union. On rhetoric, he called them the evil empire. On economically, he fought on currencies. On information, he unjammed Radio Free Europe. And military, he, militarily, he ginned it up, and he even went to outer space with Star Wars. Ronald Reagan understood it was not a time for compromise, but it was a time for courage. Think about Lech Valenza in the shipyard. When Lech Valenza understood it was a time for courage and not compromise, what was his institutional knowledge in Poland at the time? It was the memory of two million Poles sent to Stalin's Siberian work camps. They worked you to death. It was the tanks in Hungary in 1956, in Czechoslovakia. It was Hitler's gas ovens and the efficiency in the assembly lines of mass execution. Those, quite simply, that stood up in Poland were shot down, but Lech Walesa stood up anyway, founded solidarity, and he did the impossible, ending communism on a peaceful basis. He understood that it was a time for courage and not compromise. This election will be both won because of you. We have a great candidate in Joel Pollack, but this election will come down to you, house by house by house. And if you think about it as Americans, it's always come down to the people. One if by land, two if by sea. Somebody had to light that lantern so Paul Revere could take his ride. Please be the person that lights the lantern for Joel Pollock.
My name is Adam Angievsky, and I am proud to endorse Joe Pollock for Congress. Yes. Yes.